Hey everybody, Barry here again. We're back at Desperado. We're still at Desperado. <laughs> I came in to work early this morning and power washed a bunch of front end gear. I have two steering boxes because, actually let's address this right away. Cause this is different. Something I didn't know, which I'm sure somebody else knew more than I do. But look at this. Look at the difference, man. That is a huge difference. This is the steering box that came off of this frame, Chef Shrock. This is the steering box that came off an Escalade. So, look at that. I actually did not know there were different steering boxes. I assumed every one of them were the same. From what I can tell, the bolt pattern is the same because I'm pretty sure Escalade frames are the same from here up as trucks, nothing looked different. Everything unbolted the same. But that is a monstrous steering box. This weekend I need to basically restore Cass's Cadillac. So I need a new steering box for it because hers leaks and all that stuff. So uh, I took it off and uh, yeah, I kind of want the bigger steering box. I kind of think mine might need the beefier one, but I imagine the ratios and everything are different. So yeah, I don't know, man. I'll have to do some research, see what the ratios are, because I would like to have a quicker ratio for mine. If there's a more, like a wider steering ratio, I'd like to have that in the Cadillac for comfort. Mm. So yeah, I got a few things put together here, power washed. I did the lower control arms. I did the upper control arms. This thing needs four ball joints. But I'll put those in when I've got the truck done, completed. Right now, I don't really feel like I should spend the money on ball joints when I need paint and I need other stuff like that so spend a little bit of time and a little bit of money as I go I wouldn't mind putting the front end together on this actually I know I need to paint the frame but I was thinking that I might do it all in one shot so assemble it and then get the brush out where I can't get at with a brush I'll get some spray paint and spray it to cover it up before I do any of that let's check the gear ratios on these steering boxes all right, so this is the Escalade steering box. And right now I have it all the way to the right. So pointing directly at the Pitman arm is where it starts. One, two, three, three and a quarter turns, lock to lock. And here is the Silverado steering box pointing at this bolt is all the way to the right one two three i would say they're probably exactly the same so what do i use they have the same gear ratio ah god i wonder if that would cause fitment issues or not i don't know anyway i'm not gonna worry about it right now the escalade needs a steering box and I suppose I should probably put Escalade parts back on the Escalade. And I've never heard of a steering box breaking. Sure, I'll blow up a 4L60 or a 10 bolt long before a steering box causes issues. So I think I just stop wasting time talking about stuff and just bolt parts on. Let's go. set up it's perfect should probably make sure the twisty bars are uh, properly aligned before i go put the control arm in <laughs> the hardest part now is where did i put all the bolts oh i hope they're all in here oh yep torsion bar bolts look at that Sweet. I don't know if I can put the control arms in with the torsion bars still on there or not. Uh, I'm kind of nervous to find out. I really don't want to have to take the bars out of the keys. I tried. It doesn't seem to want to work, but I will spray more loosening oil in there just to try to free it up a little bit if I can. 
best stuff ever. Want to get a head start on this anyway, just in case I do need to try to get them out. Well, let's see how it goes. Well, it looks like it should work. But the thing about having taken this apart already is... Oh wait, that's upside down. <laughs> yeah, I might have put the wrong arm on me. You know I'm not cutting that out. Alright, so... Now... How does it go? I wonder... I doubt it goes like that. I think not. Oh boy, that's heavy. Let's go like this. That seems a lot more likely. Yeah, if I go one flat more, I'm up like this, so that makes way more sense. Well, at least I know I can get the arms on. So if I remember correctly, these are the bolts. The front bolts are shorter. Rear bolts are a lot longer. Should have brought a hammer. Oh, here's my old lineman punch, I guess. Why are you like this? Hurt you. Somewhere right now, there's a safety guy having a cow. <laughs> Don't hit two hammers together. I bet he's the same guy who said, "Don't link two wrenches together." So we can see back here. The bolt is the whole way through. Then you look here, and we got some stuff going on there. So, what is tweaked? What is tweaked? I'll have to work on this for a few minutes and pop back in, see how it goes. Yeah, it just took a little tiny bit of tweaking, got it in. Why does it seem like this arm is on a very extra angle? Oh, that's not bad actually. Never mind, just overly cautious. Listen to the wind howling. Wow. Wind's howling. Yep. That is great. Absolutely perfect. It's going to be <laughs> not on that quite. Not quite that aggressive of an angle. I don't remember if the bolts went backwards or forwards through there. So I got to go and look at one of the trucks outside and have a seat. So glad I didn't spend my lunch break out here today. Let's see, let's see, how does it go? Bolt goes back through. That's fine. And my bolt goes back through, so we're in good shape. That's perfect. When you're installing control arms, when you go to tighten the bolts up, you should tighten them up with the weight of the vehicle down on the suspension so that the control arms are in their normal placement, I'll say. Because if they're suspended all the way down, you tighten the bolts up, and then in order to get to its normal ride height, the control arm needs to move and flex and then you risk tearing the bushing away from the sleeve. Which of course causes the bushing to wear out faster and all that fun. I can't do that right here. So I will try to get those arms up as high as I can, tighten the bolts down. I'm not gonna leave them loose until the vehicle is at its ride height. I'm afraid that I will you know, forget to tighten them up because I'll see them in there, they'll look like they're tight. I'm, I'm afraid I'll do that. So. I'll get it as good as I can, tighten them up. And if I remember when the truck is done, I will loosen those bolts, allow them to find their resting position, tighten them up again. You know it's windy when the water goes up the ramp, in under the door, and goes the whole way in the shop. I already squeegeed that once like an hour ago. I've got the two upper control arms laid out here. And I wasn't sure if they were same or different, so I went up and checked, and the part number is the same. So that would mean to me that they're the same. 
one thing that I like is the hole for the brake hose is on both sides. You can see that I twisted this one off. So uh, the brake hose, I think, goes on the back. I will make 100% sure. But if this control arm was on the driver's side, I'm going to switch it over to the other side so that I can use the actual open control arm bolt. Because that one doesn't have anything twisted off in it. Back out in the cold rain we go. <laughs> All right, back to the parts truck. Uh, wait, this one doesn't have a... Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, it's awfully dark. And we can see that the bolt for the brake hose is on the front. I don't want to do that anymore today. All right, all right. We can see that on the front. We've got good trades. Uh -oh. Shouldn't have so much stuff in my hands. Should have brought a hammer. I faintly remember going this way, and then this one going through this way. It seems like there's a stud broken off here. I don't know if that's something that I can get off another truck. Dude, it is howling inside. Wow. Well, really, this is going to be just fine. It would do a wheel lemon on anyway, so it's not going to hurt anything for now. Turn that around, I suppose. Now, I'm not going to do a wheel lemon on this <laughs> here on the ramp, so. I'm just gonna go full camber in. So, well, at least they're even. And who doesn't like a little bit of camber? So when I get the knuckle on, then I'll drive it up as high as I can, probably ratchet strap or something, and then tighten all four bolts. And then when I get the wheel alignment done, it'll all be sort of loosened up and tightened back up and adjusted anyway. I know that I had four of these camber plates. I know I did. I have video proof. Where's the fourth one? Ah, there it is. Oh no, my mug. Oh man, that was my Coraline mug. And my coconut milk. Don't put your coffee mug on the vehicle that you're working on. I swear I have five mugs home with the handle missing. Did you believe that? Well, I got a half a break from the rain, so let's jack this truck up. Well, I say jack, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and pull front knuckles off it. buy a jack, buy a cat. My favorite thing is when people say, use tools for their intended purpose. I am. See? Too cold for this stuff. Oh no, it's not gonna work either. Put a 
pain. Oh, right <laughs> yeah, tighten it up, Barry. Good job. Man, it is still wet and nasty out here, huh? Ugh. Yep, that's not gonna work, is it? Well, aren't you fun? Why didn't you warn me that I had to take the CV axle out to get the bottom ball joint out? Mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody was going, that's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work because the CV axle's in the way. I was like, oh, this would be just easy. I'll just pull the axle one all out. Because for some reason, that's just not happening. Will not come out, so what do, what do I do? I guess I'll get the grinder out and try to cut that bottom ball joint off. What a pain, dude. What an absolute pain. I think I'm gonna pull the truck up by the shop. On tomorrow's lunch break. Well, if I can't get those knuckles off, I might as well work on something else. The front diff can be bolted in. I'd really like to clean it up and probably power wash it before I put it in though. The front diff is power washed. So am I. I'm soaked too. <laughs> Very nice. It came out pretty clean actually. I actually thought that I had something messed up because I could not figure out where this piece bolted on the frame. Could not figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, this was out in the back of one of the trucks. <laughs> Smart, Barry. Looks good on you. Probably work a lot better with that piece in there, huh? See if we can get this big old clunky thing to fit up there. So close. Don't fall off the jack now. I'm put one of these nuts on to hold it in place. There we go, that's better. Oh, is it in place? Wow, it actually is. I was nervous that my uh, diff mount down there wasn't gonna line up very well. Just, I know I, I, know I did as good of a job as I could with it. But, you know, always, always just a little bit nervous, okay? Well, I couldn't bring the compressors out to the truck. So I brought the truck to the compressor. That's one way to do it. Yeah, see if I can get that axle nut off now with the impact. If not, uh, well, I guess I'll just cut the arm off with grinder probably. saves the day once again.
almost there. Just gotta cut off this bottom ball joint now and it should fall right out again. Oh, and probably that's way where I like to do it. And there's side number two, mint. It's not that warm out. It's nice to have the door closed and be inside again. Oh, it's, it's pretty chilly. It's back inside, woohoo. And I have two knuckles with CV axles attached to them. Oh no, I just realized I have to somehow get those off. <laughs> it's gotta go back on, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a lot easier to work on inside, I guess. Well, good. You must put new rotors on it at some point. That's the CarQuest painted rotors. Very nice. Got some stuff today. Some Desperado stuff. Here's a good tailgate. Barry Daw dropped off to me today and it's actually really good. The bottom has got some rusty stuff going on there, but like outside is very, very nice. And also Aiden stopped by with some cool stuff for me today. Some brand new shackles. Sick. Very, very nice. They are factory shackles, as we can see here. I don't think I'll need lowering shackles because this is gonna be flipped anyway. And <laughs> I don't think I need to lower it that much. But, you know, compared to the dirty old rusty looking factory, I assume shackles that are on there, this will be much nicer. Now that is if I can get those bolts out also. But hey, looks really good. And also here we have some lowering kit stuff. So when you lower the truck with shackles, as it comes up, the pinion points down. So to make the transmission angle the same, the spacer goes in under the transmission and drives it up. So they're both on that same angle. This may work very, very well in my application because where I'm bringing the axle up closer to the level of the transmission, my drive shaft may be a little bit too straight or linear. You gotta have a little bit of drive shaft angle or drive line angle on there so that the U-joints can rotate and not get like kind of seized up and stuff. So when I get my drive shaft in, I'll check my drive shaft angles. If it's under like say two degrees, I'll probably put this spacer in behind the transmission and then offset my rear diff the same, just to see if I can get it up closer to like say five or six degrees. These are some shock spacers. Are you saying that they had for uh, uh, coil springs up front or struts, sorry. And I won't be needing those for that purpose, but really nice looking shims. Here are some more transmission shims. You can see that they're just bigger and they are stackable. Probably get four or five degrees just out of two of those shims. So that's, that's awesome. If not, hey, really cool spacers. Over here, we have some hub centric rings, which might actually work with these wheels, I wonder. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> they may actually fit. Dude, how cool would that be? Because look, I don't have rings on it. I never did. Dude, that is so cool. Mint. And in here, a pack of Don't Steal Me Nuts. So thanks Barry and Aiden for your contribution to the project and the build. People have helped out a big lot on this thing, and I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to see if I can get these CV axles out now. Well, I might get one knuckle in today. This is the situation with the other one. Yeah, the nut still doesn't want to come off. I don't have any deep creep, so I sprayed some honey on it. Hopefully that will allow it to loosen up a little bit. I've only got one of those little dinky torches with the blue bottle, so it's not gonna be anywhere near hot enough for that. Time and penetrating oil. We'll see how it goes. I found a little bit of deep creep and, uh, and this fluid film. <laughs> Right, whatever I can under. I gotta leave it. This was not working. I'm gonna leave it overnight and see if maybe tomorrow the nut is on the floor and the axle is out or something. With any luck. I don't know why they make these so heavy. This knuckle is only temporary because. Come on. I wanna buy drop knuckles for it. And 
I've been saving up a little bit of the Patreon money here and there to hopefully be able to get those soon. The uh, drop knuckles make a big difference with the height. So I just want to put these knuckles on to make it a roller so that I can roll it around the shop a little bit easier. And there. All I've done lately is lift heavy stuff. <laughs> well, that's in place for now. The ball joints are absolutely gone in it, but I gotta replace those at some point too. Not today, but very soon. Progress! Woo! <laughs> Got a front knuckle on. It is now three quarters of a roller. Sweet. Like I said, leave this to uh, hopefully do something tonight. Hopefully I can just buzz it off with the impact. I doubt it, but I mean, it's worth a shot. I am absolutely beat. So I just need to tidy up here and go home and get some rest, give my back a break, and then put this front knuckle on hopefully tomorrow. But that is all I'm gonna do today. That is the end of this video. It's been a four or five days into making now, so you know, starting to catch up and stuff. So thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks for everybody who contributed to the video, the, to the channel, to parts, all that fun stuff. You're all amazing. Thanks for YouTube members, patrons, and subscribers. If you want to check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash station road rat rods. My YouTube members link is down here. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.